Welcome to Kickstart Your Day podcast. I am your host, Josh Morin. I am joined today by special guest because my co-host, Bowen Sweeney, is out of the building today. So through the the next few weeks, months, etc., as we do this podcast, we're going to be bringing on some people, especially if myself and or Bowen cannot be here in person to film the podcast. We want to keep the episodes flowing. We want to keep the inspiration flowing. We want to keep the good word just being spread amongst the people. So, Devin, I appreciate you being here with us today, man. I appreciate y'all having me on. And uh, ironically enough, it's cool that you and I are uh, office buddies. No, not technically, but we, our offices are conjoined, like the conjoined twins that just got married. That's kind of how that's kind of how <laughs> Devin and I are in our offices. We're next door neighbors. Okay, I like that. Next door neighbors, probably the coolest next door neighbor that I've ever had, Devin. So I've had the priv- privilege of connecting with Devin uh, over the last year or more since I joined the business. Obviously, you've been building and one of Bowen's right hand men for quite some time prior athlete, ex-college athlete, then we'll, we'll share a little bit about your story, your transition, et cetera. So um, for those that are out there, really unique story, you know, you joining this business and, uh, you know, joining in and not really seeing a ton of success, but knew it was going to happen, then boom, you just have some massive explosion as of lately. And it's been a, a pleasure to be able to, to watch that happen next door to you and it's pleasure to be able to connect with the people that on your team you have such a great community and atmosphere man so um, really appreciate you being on here like i said so we're going to dive into it today what we want to talk about is both of us have a have a very similar uh situation prior uh athletes that grew up in our hometown Uh, you played football i wrestled wasn't quite big enough to be on the football field Uh, maybe that's just a limiting belief but i don't think my genetics played a Played, played me on that side of the ball. So you might, you might have been able to do something. Maybe, but wrestling was what I what I ended up doing. And then I ended up going to college. I uh, moved from Montana to Arizona State. So, Devin, talk a little bit about how you grew up in California, growing up life there, and then making the decision to move away from home and what that did for you in the sports realm of things. Well, so I grew up in a in a place called San Diego, California. It's a pretty big spot, um, very populated, um, and it's very uh, close together. So, I mean, there's everything to do. You know, obviously there's there's the beach, which is, you know, huge. Um, Everything is close by to where, you know, you could, I don't know, you could you yeah, could it's like a one stop shop everything you need yeah it's a one stop shop um you know you're you're from more of like a, a smaller town for sure we ain't got a whole lot there um yeah not too much to do so <laughs> it's like there's only a couple things yeah, to do right. and they're not the best things that is to do, true right right um now me I mean it's a it's similar spot but it's like you you're you're basically in paradise already right so it's like there's nothing really to you know top it you know shoot yeah <laughs> it doesn't you, you get can't, much better than that. yeah you it doesn't really get much better you have the beat you right. know you could drive a couple hours to some snow you could go to the desert you know right. rip some buggies whatever you want um but i was i mean with football i was able to you know get out um which i, I lived in san diego for my entire life till i was 21 until i got a scholarship um to go out if you guys already heard you know bowen's you know story we played football together in arkansas now, obviously, you know, San Diego to Arkansas, that's a big change up, you know, culture shock for me. But, you know, I just full sent it. Um, but it really cultured me and it showed me, you know, a little more that's out there. And that br- also football brought me to Arizona where we're currently at. Right. Um, talk before you dive into that. Talk about the change between San Diego, California and the backwoods of Arkansas. Well, it kind of goes into a little, you know, trip to like your side of things where there's not much to do except right. basically, you know, like drink and like, you know, do a bunch of dumb stuff, you right. know, essentially. So, but if you're, you really have to, you know, kind of lock in, uh-huh. especially say like for football, when we're, you know, trying to be, you know, college athletes, I I really had to lock in, um, which sometimes being in a, in a spot like that where there's not much to do except dumb stuff, it, it kind of limits your, you know, abilities of what, what you could do essentially, but also you could, you know, kind of channel in your efforts to, you know, be as productive as possible. Right. Now, me personally in college, you know, I was, I was an idiot. 
um, for sure. And I didn't necessarily channel all of my efforts into, you know, being the best athlete I could have been or the best student I could have been. Um, so it was a big change up. Um, how, about the, how about the city? How many people were there? So, shoot. We actually... What, fun, what was the city name? Funny funny thing of it is, is we actually uh, stole the population, Stein. <laughs> um, so <laughs> there was there was about, I want to say, there was a little over 3,000 people. Yeah. Where my graduating class in, in high school was, three, was, was a thousand. Okay. So it's like, you know, my graduating class was a third, third of the, of the right. population that I was in for, you know, uh, out in Arkansas. And the population was actually, there was two colleges side by side, one being Henderson State where me and Bone went, the other being Wachita Baptist. So it's like, you know, majority of the population is college, um, mm. college students. Right. Um, What's, what was that? What was that like in terms of like the culture shock? Was there any culture shock that you experienced going out to Arkansas? Oh, for sure. I told myself I was never going to get some, you know, cowboy boots. Um, and then, you? you know, within about, you know, four months, I got some co- yeah, cowboy some boots. Yeah, some kickers and some yeah, Wranglers. I was the only one out there rocking, you know, Vans 24-7. Yeah, right. You know, as a little, you know, beach boy. Did you go to Buckle and get them little blingy jeans? No, I did not get that. <laughs> the little patterns on, on the little little butt pocket. Come on, come on now. Yeah. Oh man. So as a young man, so you you move out 18, 19 years old, you go to college in Arkansas. What is it what did that do in terms of, of your interpersonal development just as a young young man, you know, going to college, being in an uncomfortable position, you know, being exposed to that early, share that journey of what that did for you in your growth as a young man. Um, for sure, it, it was a lot of freedom on my right. hands okay. where First I didn't, time. I didn't have a lot of freedom right. back home. I was always, you know, I ha- I'm from, you know, uh, a good set of parents, it's good. um, who I love, but I was, you know, I was always living with them. You know, right. I was always limited on what I could do, you know? Like I was saying, it, it was a lot of freedom on my hands, but I had to learn how to be independent in all facets right um first time being independent yeah first time being independent first time being on my own you know living by myself which you know could be a blessing and it also could be a curse because you could you know do a bunch of you know dumb stuff because you're finally free you're you're out of you know anybody's watch also you're you know halfway across the country as well (laughs) <laughs> uh, <laughs> could be problematic I understand. right 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 so i had to learn to be independent um and you know start doing everything on my own and so so it was it was for sure like a little bit of a learning curve but i also had to you know obviously make my own friends because you know i'm halfway across the country i don't know anybody in the south so you know i had to get out of my comfort zone of you know meeting new people um you know being you know getting out of my social little you know bubble i guess you could say because me me uh like personally or naturally um you know very reserved like very calm you know chill guy who you know only only talks when need i need to be taught or someone someone's asking me a question or you know someone's talking to me so um i had to get out of my comfort zone which i found later on in life is you know a huge thing on your way on your road to success so it's you know always about you know getting comfortable with being uncomfortable so you know being in a whole new town halfway across the country it's it's a big culture shock you know a lot of people that i saw come from similar situations you know within you know a couple months or like a year they go back because they can't handle it they need to be around you know the people you know they they grew up with where in San Diego, you know, uh, my graduating class, like I said, you know, is, is roughly a thousand people. So, you know, I knew a lot of people and I got comfortable with, you know, not having to reach out and make new friends. So I think that was a that was a big step on my, you know, journey, um, you know, getting outside of, you know, my my um, hometown. Right. Fast forwarding from your transfer because I, I don't uh, I want to get a little bit more into meat mat- meat and potatoes of today's topic is transferring to Arizona Christian here and then getting into the insurance space you're fresh out of college 
not tell me you fill me in on a little bit of of where were you at what'd you grad did you graduate college yeah i graduated okay, sweet. well i'm a college college dropout um so you, <laughs> you graduated college did you have jobs in mind did you have something that you were aspiring to do uh maybe a <laughs> oh, man I, maybe we'll make this one a little bit longer but uh yeah <laughs> i'm here for it you know honestly we should talk here's what we'll do this is what we're gonna do because this is fucking crazy is share a little bit about when you first got out of college what you did for your first job yeah, so this this might be the hot topic of the <laughs> of the pod. I didn't know. I didn't think I was gonna take this here today, but you know what? Let's let's, let's let it let it on roll. Yeah. Let's run it. So first off, to answer your your initial question, um, I had I had no jobs in mind to be honest. Okay, free so, flown, free yeah, flown. So I was free flown. I was out of college. You know, finally done with schoolwork. Right. Thank God. Of course. Because I mean, to you know, back to you being a dropout, I. <sighs> If it wasn't for football, you know, I wouldn't have gone to college. And so I was just going to college basically for football. And when I got thrown out into the free world, first of all, I mean, I'm sure it's the same with you being a wrestler. You know, for me being a football player, I played football my entire life. So that is your life for so many years. So when you get thrown out into the free world and you lose right. what was your life, you have that hole missing from you. Yeah, the identity, man. Right. It, it, right. Yeah, it truly is your identity. Right. It's like, okay, I was known as, you know, Devin Nielsen, the football player. Who am uh, I now? Yeah, What exactly. am I really about now? Right. Yeah. And so you got to find that new person. And so, you know, when I got thrown out into the free world, you know, I was just, it's like, okay, now it's time to have fun. And so, you know, I, I <laughs> fell in. <laughs> All right, we'll get, we'll get to it. So I I got exposed to you know a business that a couple <laughs> <laughs> you like that that's a crazy <laughs> word it's like, yeah I got, I got, I got exposed to the black tar, tar black tar heroin yeah yeah <laughs> hell of a drug <laughs> that's essentially what yeah. you got exposed to. no no I got here here's a better word okay. I got introduced okay. I got introduced I like to a uh, a business that's very out of the ordinary that a couple of my buddies from San Diego were already in. And that uh, business or that job was working for a hot air balloon company. <laughs> so essentially I was a I was a you know a hot air balloon carny. A concierge. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, you know, like a, I, I don't even know what you want to call it. An air concierge. Yeah, right? yeah. An airbender. <laughs> natural born airbender. Holy over here. schmoly. But, um, yeah, so I was a, I was a crew member for an air, hot air balloon company, upgraded to, you know, crew chief, <laughs> uh, which, you know, the only level up from that is, you know, becoming a pilot or becoming like the owner. So you're very limited on the ranks. And this, this is out in San Diego? So I started it while I was in college my last year, maybe last two years while I was home for summer just so, you know, okay. you know, make some cash, yep. some quick, fun cash. And, you know, you, you get paid decent. You're basically getting paid minimum wage, but you also kind of rely on tips. Yeah, they give you tips. Yeah. So, yeah. so. It was okay. So, sometimes you get some good tips, right. but you know, other than that, if you don't have a good tip day, you know, you're getting paid min minimum wage for backbreaking work. I got you. And so it's like, but it was perfect for me at the time because you know, as a football player, you know, I'm used to just you know moving around weight, right. you know, basically, basically, you know, I guess you could say blue collar work. Right. So I was getting paid to you know lift weight, basically work out. And have fun. So just being out in the desert or, you know, out in some fields, you know, you know, setting up balloons, sending them into the air, you know, going and catching them, um, you know, lassoing them down, basically hopping on them like a like a dang bull. Um, and then and then, you know, just it, it was it was fun. Um, I got to obviously, you know, drink the, the leftover champagne that the passengers course, didn't, right. didn't drink. So, you know, all the perks. <laughs> well, um, what's the craziest story you got? Um, so we so especially in San Diego. Yeah. If you guys don't know already, I'll break it down for you. Hot air balloons, they navigate with wind. So, you know, the only way they could stare is with different wind um, 
basically different wind tunnels, I guess right. you could yeah, say. Patterns of the wind. Yeah, yeah the different, wind. different wind patterns. Right. And so they drop up or down to, you know, catch different, you know, Cross wind directions. Right. Yeah, yeah. I get you. Um, to go where they're, to go to one of our uh, landing zones. <laughs> and the landing zones are not like true landing zone. It's literally just like a random field or, you know, a random lot that we randomly named, you know, like Beehive or something because right. one day someone saw a beehive there. Got you. And so it's like, hey, like we're on, we're on, you know, radios, walkie talkies, whatever you want to call them. And it, you know, we're, we're on there with the, with the pilots. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're sending it. And, but sometimes, especially in San Diego, because we had, you know, the ocean breeze, right. Winds would get nuts. <laughs> and so, especially in the afternoon flights, there's times where, you know, they're going, they're going, you know, coming, coming in hot. Right. Like I'm talking like, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles per hour. And if you don't know, you know, the only way to stop is either they get dragged until, you know, the winds stop or they, you know, hit something or they rely on the crew, which is why we, you know, we were rolling so deep in San Diego because of the winds. We right when they touch down, we have to be there to hop on and hunker it down. And so there was times, I mean, people would get bucked off. Like Yo. some of the crew would get yeah. bucked off laying on their Live backs. Action. Then there's sometimes where, you know, it would, it would be, they'd be coming in so hot, you know, uh, a crew member hops on and it hits the ground so hard that it pops back in the air. And I've seen crew members hanging on to the side of a, a hot air balloon 30, 40, 50, 40 feet in the air. <laughs> I'm like, Jimmy. Jimmy, hop off if you think it's going to go back <laughs> up. Come on. <laughs> like, what are you doing I over ain't there? letting go. But what I found with the hot air balloon um, industry, it was fun while it lasted, obviously, but I got very complacent. I got very comfortable because I was around complacent and comfortable right. individuals. Yeah. And I, it, it was kind of similar to, you know, my hometown, a lot of people are already in paradise, so they're, you know, comfortable and they're complacent because, you know, they have everything they want to do, you know, just going to the beach, you know, uh, any day of the week, you know, there's nothing really to, you know, look forward to other than something like that. You have our everything, you know, out there for you to go get. And so the people, the, the hot air balloon uh, business is all you would see as, like, crew crew chiefs pilots is either really young individuals like myself who are in college or just graduated college or even high schoolers because it was like you know just you're basically getting paid to lift right um work out and have fun and then but then there's there's the youngins and then there's you know dudes that have been in the industry or kind of just out i guess you could say outcasts to where, you know, they're just, you know, free flowing through life, you know, no real right. aspirations and stuff of like course. that. So being surrounded by that, you know, I wasn't exposed to, you know, anything else yeah. in the real world until, you know, I got introduced to this opportunity f by Bowen. And it really took the blinders off and exposed me to what is really out there for me to go get as the you know a young you know business individual that i am did you did you want to did you want to do business did you want to have your own business or were you just okay at the time just being like you know what i'm just doing me and, and has my cards fall or did you always have some level of vision for what you wanted in your future uh, talk about that you know did you always want to be in business or do business or was it something like uh, honestly, I was you, I, you don't you don't strike me as the type of guy that would really do well in corporate America. Um, so, I, I mean, was that an aspiration of yours or or were you just free flown at that point in time in your life? I was I was just free flown. I got you. Whatever and came your way. Yeah. Whatever came my way, whatever, you know, door opened to me. Right. And I saw it, you know kind of fit in me. Yeah. I was I was really about it, which this was n not it. Like I, I, if someone told me, you know, I was going to be, you know, selling life insurance or, you know, building a life insurance agency, you know, I would have told them to kick rocks, like t go take a hike. Yeah. Nobody grows up and says, I want to be in the life insurance industry. Right. right. 
I always wanted to do something big and I always wanted to be, you know, the guy I saw on, you know, like social media, you know, with, you know, everything um, and running it up in life. But I, the way or where I was, you know, brought up in life, I always saw myself maybe getting there, you know, in my late forties, fifties, you know, later on in life. And so I knew I could get there and I knew I could be that, that kind of person, you know, a business owner of, of some sort, because obviously my, my father was a self-made business owner. Um, and I wanted to, you know, fall in his shoes. Um, but he, he got to, you know, his success, you know, way later in life. So right. maybe that's why I saw myself, you know, getting there later in life. But my dreams were always, you know, playing the NFL, like, you know, any other football player out there. Um, but like I was saying earlier, you know, when that's taken away, it's like, okay, now how do I do it? You know, now how do I make the money? And so when I, when I got introduced to this business, I had no idea, you know, one, it was going to be even for me. I had no idea it was going to take me to, you know, this, this place in life where I'm at right now, this fast. But, um, I, I just kind of bet on myself first right. off. Bone yeah. was chasing me, you know, <laughs> for, for, um, you know, a couple months, you right. know, I was pushing off because I was having fun. Like you were saying, you know, I was having fun and just okay with, you know, making enough to pay rent and, you know, you know, eat and whatnot. And I, I didn't really know that I could, you know, do something with my life right now. And so when I got, you know, when I, finally bet on myself and, you know, trusted in Bowen about this business. I, I dove head first and I literally, I, I'm not, I probably, you know, it wasn't the best way to go about it, but I, I was still working at balloons and I just, you know, dipped out. I didn't say anything. And, you know, I, I sent it into this because I was like, Oh, I don't know, maybe I'll fall back on it. But also, you know, I, I ghosted them. So it's like, you can't really fall back if you just ghost. Get the the bridge is gone. <laughs> yeah. It's burnt. Just burnt it. Yeah. 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 Um, and so what I saw when I hopped into this business was wild because I saw individuals who are, you know, my age or around my age, even younger, that were making crazy money. And I never saw myself doing anything like that until I was like later on in life. And so I got exposed, basically opened up, you know, took the blinders off and saw what I could really do right now. And coming back, you know, taking a step back on what I was saying earlier, you know, I had that hole missing from football and quickly that hole was filled with insurance, which I never saw that, you know, happening. And it was because one, I had the team aspect. I had the camaraderie. You know, I had the, it has the competitiveness that I I always had in football. Um, and what I saw, being the individual that I am, I say this all the time. You know, I might be the you know one of the dumbest people in this in this office here, but what I always relied on in football was my work ethic, my mindset, and my vision. Like I always knew I could get to the next level. You know, in football. And I knew through my my work ethic and my mindset that I would always, you know, work my way onto that field, even if I had things going against me, which, you know, a lot, there was a lot of things going against me in my, you know, football journey um, or my football career. And first off, you know, I'm a, I'm a white wide receiver. So, you know, that's not the, you know, stereotypical wide receiver um, and I wasn't always the fastest. I wasn't the strongest. I obviously wasn't the biggest, you know, I have wide receivers, you know, they're usually six, six, two, six, three, six, six, whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm five eleven, um, six foot in my mom's shoes. That's what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, I was, I was never, you know, the strongest, the fastest, you know, the biggest. And I for sure, you know, wasn't, you know, the brightest on the field. You know, I never really looked at defenses. I would just, you know, trust on my, my skills and abilities to get me open on the field. And what I found in this business was it doesn't take the most experience. It doesn't take the most talented. It doesn't take, you know, the, the, you know, the smartest individual out there like myself Um, but all it takes is someone that's truly willing to one, just bet on themselves and go to work and go out and get what they're truly worth. 
And so I found that in this business and it's, it's taken, taken my whole life to the next, to the next level. And it's, it's crazy how fast your life can change when you're in the right vehicle and you're around the right individuals. Um, like yourself, Josh, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be, you know, next door neighbors, um, with our offices, but you know, when you're, when you're surrounded by hungry individuals who are all, you know, just driven and wanting more out of life, especially at our, you know, young stage, it's, it's hard to lose. And it's hard to be complacent because, you know, the person next door to you, like, you know, this man, Josh, you know, I, I'll hear him, you know, getting after it in, in there. And I'm like, shoot, like, what am I doing? I need to get after it. You know, I need, I need to hunker down. I need to put my, my foot back on the, on the gas pedal. And so it's hard to lose in that atmosphere. It's hard to lose around, you know, the right people, the right team, um, because everyone, you, you can't get complacent in this business because when you get complacent, that's when you, you, you take a couple steps back and then you fall out. Right. So it's always like on to the next. And it's kind of funny because I was going over, you know, goals with my, you know, bunch of my, uh, my team members yesterday. And I was, I was talking to them about the same exact thing. It's like in, in business and in life, you always got to be looking for that next step up the ladder. You always got to be looking for that next milestone or striving for that next milestone. And that's one thing, you know, going back on our main topic today is, you know, getting outside of your hometown because your hometown is going to have, have a lot of things that are going to hold you back, a lot of distractions, a lot of things that are going to slow you down. And when you get out, you know, into, you know, the free world um, and in a new world, you know, you're, you're forced to, you know, make something of yourself. And so it's like in football, you know, I, I created a name for myself solely based off of my work ethic. And then when, when, you know, that was taken away from me, it's like, okay, now how do I make a, a new name for myself? You know, instead of, you know, Devin Nielsen, the football player, it's Devin Nielsen, the businessman or the entrepreneur. And this was the, I didn't know it at the, at the time when I started, but this was the exact vehicle that I needed to create that name for myself and, you know, create, a a new path like for my lineage, I guess you could say, you know, create the new, you know, um, the continue on the, the Nielsen, you know, self-made, self-made, uh, you know, men, um, of my lineage. So it's like when I and what I see from other people, you know, that have come into this this business is those who are who stay in their hometown and try to become, you know, business owners and whatnot. They are, you know, they kind of have training wheels on, I guess you could say they they, you know, are, are crippled to a sense and you won't fully get you won't fully reap what you sow until you get out and it's tough for some individuals and some individuals can make it happen but for most individuals they have to get out of that environment and they have to throw themselves into the fire and what i found was the fire was here in arizona because that's where all of all of the top dogs that we had on the squad were at and so it's it's at some point you got to you know get out of your comfort zone and go where the fire is so you could add fuel to your fire and take yourself to the next level absolutely 1000 percent. i mean it's taking the training wheels off and i've said this before is is try it all do it all attempt it all i mean in and experience life in, in many different facets and spend spend your 20s if you can if you have the freedom to be able to discover and explore new opportunities, meet new people, live in new places. I, I, I could, if I went back, man, I lived like a nomad for most of my 20s, and I'm grateful for all the experiences of that. I traveled all over, lived out of my truck, grew my hair out, lived in a renovated tour bus in Kauai. I really tried and did it all. I was with monks and meditation facilities. I went vegan and 
did all sorts of drugs and psychedelics and all sorts of different things, but it all led me here. It was all part of my journey, and I wouldn't change. It. I want to change a the thing. There's probably some things. Uh, relationship-wise, I'd probably like to change or amend, but I've done my best in my later years as a man in recovery to amend some of those relationships and the others that that don't require it, just let go freely. But moving away from your hometown, for me, it's been the most powerful thing. You could always move back, is what I tell people. It's going to be there. It's gonna be. It's going to be there. It'll invite you back, no matter how much you've cheated on it. It'll, it'll invite you back. It really, really will. Yeah. And putting yourself in a position to be around people that are inspired daily like we have here only takes you to the next level. The cream rises to the top, right? The cream rises to the top. And so if you put yourself in a room, especially if you're amongst high achievers, people who are success seekers, prosperity partners, you're going to really find yourself rising to the top. Or, or sulking in your own mediocrity and your own self-doubt and your own critical self-talk. And you're going to find yourself, most of the time, those people will eliminate themselves one way, shape, or form or the other because they don't really fit in. But the people who really see that the people around them, ultimately, at the end of the day, the common denominator is we all want to win, putting yourself in that position to be around that powerful energy structure, around those people every single day that are like, you know what, because you're here doing it, then I got to be here doing it. I got to show up. I got to keep myself accountable because I know you're keeping yourself accountable. And since we're keeping each other accountable too, self-accountability and then accountability of others, if, now that we're all on the same page, we only can go from here. So Devin, it's been a pleasure to have you on here. Uh, it's been great to have you as our first guest on the Kickstart Your Day podcast. So I really, really appreciate that. You are the epitome of hard work, dedication, and you inspire me daily. You're up. You barely miss ever. You're super consistent, and I can see that in you. And that's something myself that I definitely take from what you do is I see how consistent you are in your day-to-day -day and what you're doing as your team. Very, very inspiring. So please give D, D Nelly, Devin Nilsson, a follow on Instagram. Please give us a follow. Like we said, we're going to give away $1,000 not to the first 500 subscribers, but to one of the first 500 subscribers that comment, like, subscribe to our page, share with your friends, share the love, and let's kickstart your day together, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Appreciate you, Devin. Appreciate you having me All on. right.